Astronomers may finally have a chance to study an exploding star as Betelgeuse approaches the end of its life. When looking up at the night sky, it is hard to comprehend the life cycle of a star. Humanity is a blip in time compared to these celestial objects. Planets, stars, and even entire galaxies live on borrowed time. Eventually, they approach the end of their life and go out with an explosion. Let's take a closer look. Betelgeuse is a star nearing the end of its life. Because it is creating heavier and heavier elements in its core that could be used for stars after it dies, a NASA story once dubbed the Red Giant a workaholic. The star is famous among amateur astronomers not only for its size and brightness, but also because it is a part of Orion, a bright winter constellation in the northern hemisphere. Professional astronomers also keep a close eye on the star as it is notoriously variable. Its diameter changes from anywhere between 550 to 920 times the sun's diameter. In 2013, astronomers said Betelgeuse is likely to crash into a cosmic wall of interstellar dust in a few thousand years. Ancient astronomers would have easily spotted Betelgeuse because of its size and relatively close distance from Earth. It is about 600 light years away and has a variable brightness generally peaking at 0.4 and following below 1.2. Some 20th century observations by the American Association of Variable Star Observers suggested peak magnitudes of 0.2 in 1933 and 1942. It is the 12th brightest star in the night sky. It is probable that the name Betelgeuse originated in Arabic words, but the star had other names in Sanskrit, traditional Chinese, and even Hawaiian. When astronomers say Betelgeuse is expected to explode soon, they mean shortly in astronomical terms, within a million years, according to several sources. Predicting exactly when it will turn into a supernova is difficult, however, as it depends on precise calculations of its mass, as well as an understanding of what is going on inside the star. Betelgeuse is so vast, its size would extend beyond Jupiter's orbit if it were placed in the sun's position in the solar system, that several telescopes have captured images of the star and spotted it shedding mass. Starting in 1993 and continuing for at least 15 years, its radius shrank by 15%, an astonishing amount for such a short time. As the star prepares for what could be a large explosion, another challenge awaits. It is expected to crash into a wall of interstellar dust in the next few thousand years. An infrared Herschel Space Observatory image released in 2013 suggested it would crash into the dust at a speed of 66,960 miles per hour. The crash would take a while to complete. The solar wind is expected to touch the line around 5,000 years from now, with the heart of the star crashing into the bar 12,500 years after that. Ongoing observations of Betelgeuse reveal that we still have much to learn about its structure. Observations of the red giant revealed that the gas that is leaving the star is colder than astronomers thought it would be. Scientists aren't sure how so much mass left the star while not generating a lot of heat. Possible explanations include magnetic fields or shock waves, but more work will be needed to confirm the models. Astronomers are also doing comparison studies with another red supergiant star, Antares, to better understand the situation. Meanwhile, scientists remain puzzled by Betelgeuse's ultra-fast rotation, which is about 150 times faster than expected. This may have happened if the star swallowed a sun-mass star about 100,000 years ago. Given Betelgeuse's huge size, it's 1,000 times wider than our sun, or 860 million miles across, it should be spinning much more slowly. In 2017, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array Telescope, or ALMA, took its first image of Betelgeuse's surface, which astronomers said was the highest resolution image yet obtained of the star. In doing so, it has provided astronomers and enthusiasts alike with the highest resolution image ever captured of the red supergiant. The sensitivity of ALMA's detection system allows for increasingly nuanced and precise findings. That's because, unlike many telescopes that observe visible light, the collection of antennas that make up ALMA detect radio wavelengths, which can penetrate the gas and dust that obscures other views. ALMA consists of 66 antennas, 
and the telescope dishes have diameters ranging from 7 to 12 meters. The reflective surface of each dish captures radiation from a distant celestial object and focuses it into a detector that then measures the light. When the wave is converted into a digital signal, it is carried over 10 miles to an operation support facility, which then combines the outputs of the many antennas into a single image. The M in ALMA stands for millimeter, which is the wavelength size of the radiation that the telescope dishes capture. On the electromagnetic spectrum, these waves sit between infrared and radio waves. The surfaces of the dishes are so accurate that they can measure to within 25 micrometers. VLT captured features that helped explain the tremendous rates at which Betelgeuse sheds gas and dust, and now ALMA has been able to detect the localized temperature increases that make the star's surface uneven. The submillimeter wavelengths that ALMA can detect are coming from the red supergiant star's lower chromosphere, giving a glimpse of life below the surface of the star. The life cycle of a star is largely determined by its overall mass. The bigger a star is in size, the faster it burns and the shorter its life cycle is. The mass of a star is determined by the amount of matter which is available in the nebula it exists in. All stars are formed in a giant cloud of dust and gas drifting in the endless void of space. These clouds of debris are called nebulae. Over time, chunks of this gas and debris are pulled together by gravity and collapse upon themselves. This causes the massive deposits of hydrogen gas contained in the nebula to be pulled together and start spinning. As this gas spins faster, it starts heating up and becomes what is known as a protostar. This is how stars as we know them first come into existence and start their journey through life which lasts billions of years. Every star that exists starts as a giant cloud of gas and debris. This is the first stage of stellar evolution and marks the start of the life cycle of a star. The overall temperature in the cloud must be low enough to support the synthesis of molecules. The process of formation begins when a particularly dense region of this gas cloud begins to warm up and shrink rapidly. Such an occurrence can initiate a gravitational collapse of the molecular cloud significant enough to trigger the birth of a new star. Each of these gas clouds can contain enough matter to form anywhere from a few dozen to many thousands of stars. When the gas particles contained in the molecular cloud constantly collide with each other, heat energy is produced. As the temperature keeps rising due to this reaction, it results in the formation of a warm clump of molecules called a protostar. This is the second stage of stellar evolution. The creation of such protostars can be easily observed in the universe with the use of infrared vision. This is because these infant stars are much warmer than other materials contained in the molecular cloud. This warm clump of molecules can be classified as a protostar for as long as other matter keeps being pulled inside of it. If the protostar is unable to acquire sufficient mass, it will instead turn into a brown dwarf. When matter eventually stops falling into the protostar and a tremendous amount of energy is released by the object, it signifies that the star has entered its third phase of stellar evolution and can now be classified as a T Tauri star. The overall temperature of a star in this stage of its life cycle is not high enough to support nuclear fusion in its core. This phase lasts for around 100 million years, and when it finally ends, the star is ready to enter the most extended phase of its developmental journey. The main sequence is the fourth and the longest phase of stellar evolution. It is the phase our sun currently sits in. It starts when the core temperature of the star finally gets high enough for nuclear fusion to commence. During this process, the protons of hydrogen are converted into atoms of helium due to an exothermic reaction. As the star continues to convert hydrogen atoms into helium for most of its life, eventually the hydrogen fuel contained on its surface runs out and the internal reaction, which has been taking place in its core for millions of years, suddenly slows down and stops. Without this reaction, the star starts to cool down and contract inwards through gravity, which causes it to expand. As this expansion continues, the star first turns into a subgiant star, which eventually leads to it becoming classified as a red giant. This is the fifth stage of stellar evolution. As the star expands, it causes the helium molecules found in its core to fuse. The energy released from this reaction prevents the core of the star from collapsing. Once the fusion of helium molecules ends, the core shrinks and begins fusing carbon. This process keeps repeating until iron appears in the core. The fusion reaction, thanks to the presence of iron, then starts to absorb energy, causing the core of the star to collapse. 
This implosion is an event that transforms massive stars into a supernova, and smaller stars, similar to the size of our sun, contract and turn into white dwarfs. This is the sixth stage of the life cycle of a star. In the final stage of its life cycle, the implosion of a star causes most of the debris from its outer layers to blast away into space. Analyzing data from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and several other observatories, astronomers have concluded that the bright red supergiant star Betelgeuse quite literally blew its top in 2019, losing a substantial part of its visible surface and producing a gigantic surface mass ejection. These new observations yield clues as to how red stars lose mass late in their lives as their nuclear fusion furnaces burn out before exploding as supernovae. The amount of mass loss significantly affects their fate. However, Betelgeuse's surprisingly petulant behavior is not evidence that the star is about to blow up anytime soon. So the mass loss event is not necessarily the signal of an imminent explosion. Scientists are hard at work analyzing data from different sources to piece together the puzzle of the star's petulant behavior before, after, and during the eruption. Scientists state that they have never before seen a huge mass ejection of the surface of the star. We are witnessing something that we don't completely understand. It's like watching stellar evolution in real time. The Titanic outburst in 2019 was possibly caused by a convective plume more than a million miles across, bubbling up from deep inside the star. It produced shocks and pulsations that blasted off the chunk of the photosphere, leaving the star with a large cool surface area under the dust cloud that was produced by the cooling piece of the photosphere. Betelgeuse is now struggling to recover from this injury. Weighing roughly several times as much as our moon, the fractured piece of the photosphere sped off into space and cooled to form a dust cloud that blocked light from the star as seen by Earth observers. The dimming, which began in late 2019 and lasted for a few months was easily noticeable even by backyard observers watching the star change brightness. Though our Sun has coronal mass ejections that blow off small pieces of the outer atmosphere, astronomers have never witnessed such a large amount of a star's visible surface get blasted into space. Therefore, surface mass ejections and coronal mass ejections may be different events. Betelgeuse is now so huge that if it replaced the Sun at the center of our solar system, its outer surface would extend past the orbit of Jupiter. In the coming years, astronomers may use the James Webb Space Telescope to detect the ejected material in infrared light as it continues moving away from the star. If you like this video, you may also like this one, which talks about the Perseverance rover and its discovery of organic matter on Mars. What would happen to Earth if the Sun exploded? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.